Anyway, let's talk about Omega Agent. <laughs> Omega Agent is a 5 cost, 4 5 Warlock uh, minion with Battle Cry. If you have 10 mana crystals, summon 2 copies of this minion. This is really good. Like, this is a really good card. Um, my, my thing with, uh, with the first, with the mega card that we have seen so far is that it was kind of weak when it comes out, and then when it's strong, it's not that impressive. Um, five costs four five, it's a little bit below average, but not by much, so it's really not much to sneeze on if you, sneeze at. If you need to make a, a tempo play, Omega Agent is not bad, and it's also, and it's just amazing when you have, when you have ten minions. 10 mana crystals because then you have three four fives on the field and your opponent's gonna have a hard time reacting to that um i think this this can go in a a zoo a zoo lock deck if, to be fair um because i think that's a it's a pretty decent five cost minion and you know you can have those three copies but then again zoo lock is not one to really want to to get to that 10 uh 10 turn point so they may think not think about running it. I also think that this is actually a fair card for a mid-range uh, warlock deck that doesn't have, want to rely on uh, demons so much. But it's just a decent card overall. I I'm actually really impressed with this card. I think it's really good. I can give you the point there. If anything, it is playable to where you kind of look at it and you just go, you know, this isn't so bad. Like. At five, if I need to drop it, I can just drop it just for its solid stats. It is like Despicable Dreadlord, bar the, hey, look, I'm going to do one damage to everything on my opponent's side of the board. And then, like, if it's deeper into the late game to where with the uh, 10 minute crystals, you get the doppelganger effect, and you're just like, all right, boom, try to clear it and get through it. Um, I could see potentially some Reno decks looking at this five cost because of the, of the late game potentiality with it. Oh, definitely. Um, as far as standard side of things go, like you said, the zoo lock part probably won't run it. So it's just like, eh. I'm thinking more know. of a mid range deck. Yeah, I think realistically it falls into that let's experiment with this in the first week or so of which in the new set of Boomsday Project. And then we'll You go almost through. did it too. I almost did. And then we'll go from there. But if anything, before I get myself caught up on the previous expansion, I'm sticking to the new expansion by talking about Lab Recruiter. It's a two cost, three, two, Rogue Common. The battle cry is shuffle three copies of a friendly minion into your deck. So you're looking at a one sided gang up. Uh, Mill Rogue might be happy because of this thing. I won't be as far as Wild goes because Mill Rogue's already disgusting. Um, if anything, there's also another Rogue to cost that has come out that we'll be discussing later that I'm sitting here going with Lab Recruiter and the quest from Quest Rogue. This, this idea of running these two in tandem is just absolutely filthy and disgusting, and it's like I shouldn't be... I shouldn't be allowed to sit here and theory craft in my brain what I'm going to do potentially with Quest Rogue when, once this new set drops. Or at least any kind of Rogue for that matter in particular because this also works with like Felidori Strider because it's like, oh look, here's more spiders for my deck. to where you can go Miracle style with it, you know, prep 
sprint to be able to get into your spiders faster. And it's just, ugh, bald, stop me because I'm talking all of the disgusting stuff because this card is just so good. Yeah, I think this is getting this is going to see play. This is a meta defining card. I think most rogue decks will probably play this in standard. It's very good because it has that gang of effects for friendly minions only, as you pointed out. And wild, um, you were talking about Mill Rogue. I'm not sure. Uh, I know that Mill Rogue has a very, um, they've kind of refined the de refined the decks, and yeah. Lab Recruiter could make uh, could make a, an appearance in those decks. Uh, it just depends on whether they have room, whether what changes they can make. Make uh, and basically, is it already too refined? Um, basically, do they need Lab Recruiter or not, or would they rather just keep uh, gang up if they can't have both? Um, it just depends on how refined those decks are. And to be fair, I really don't think that's going to affect um, the deck too much. Um, and what I mean by that is, it's not going to, like, Mill Rogue is already a certain level annoying to play with. It's not going to make it even worse. I think they're already at the, kind of the threshold of about how refined those decks are. They may add a Lab Recruiter. They may not. Those decks are incredibly refined. I also don't think that Lab Recruiter's existence is going to cause an upspike in Mill Rogue and Wild at all. Because Wild is one of those places where, you, when you get down to it, people, people who are playing the decks are the people who want to play the decks because they like playing those certain types of decks. So the people playing Mill Rogue or Mill Druid or Mill whatever, they like playing Mill decks, and so they are specifically playing those decks. It's not like there's going to be an up an uptick in the decks. If this was standard, uh, and there were Mill Rogues in standard, maybe you would see an uptick. Wild, not so much. I think the only uptick deck uptick you might see in Wild is going to be mech decks, but that's because, just because this is a mech expansion, and that's going to have people probably dragging out their old mech idea, dragging their old mech ideas out, and seeing it seeing what they can play around with and, you know, playing around with old love. So I think that's the only uptake you're going to see. I don't think Mech, Mill Rogue is going to see, a, is going to see a, an uptick in uh, Wild at all. And I'm not as convinced that Lab Recruiter is going to make those decks even more disgusting than, they, disgusting than they are, mainly because they are just so refined at this point that they may or may not be able to find a place for Lab Recruiter. And if they do find a place for Lab Recruiter, I don't think it's really going to change um how good those decks are make them better or just worse to play against. next up we have weaponized pinata which is a four cost four three mech with the death rattle add a random legendary minion to your hand this is essentially the piloted shredder of this uh expansion it has the it's exact same stacks four cost four three it's a mech uh and the and the good thing is it does not have piloted shredders downside um yeah sure you'd have a random two cost minion could be something good but there are some bad two cost minions mainly the dreaded doomsayer so you you're not really taking a chance um the only bad part is um it, in that case you're not getting a minion on the board but you are getting a random legendary minion into your hand which can actually be really really good because it can be a legendary minion from any class and so there are a lot of really cool possibilities Weaponized Compendium I could give you. So I think this is going to be like the go-to Potted Shredder type um, uh, minion for the set. Um, Potted Shredder was nuts when it first came out because we hadn't really seen anything like that then. We've kind of seen things like that now, so a lot of people aren't really giving Weaponized Pinata um, the same looks as Pilot Shredder, but really they need to be considering it, considering them in the, the same type of breath because I do think that Weaponized Pinata is going to fill that same niche. Niche, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be potentially meta defining. I think it's definitely going to see play. Potentially being meta defining. Oh no, my friend, this is definitely meta defining because it's just you have Pilot Shredder, you can play it on tempo. You can you're, you're getting a legendary. I also think that you forget how much, how cautious I tend to work things, even if I think yeah. thing. So yeah, you, you, I, you, I can, get what you, you mean. can translate what I'm saying as when I think it's potentially meta defining. Meta defining I think it is going to be meta defining, but I'm holding off just in case people don't latch onto it. Oh, I get what you mean there. Um, if anything, um, as just a ha ha to me because I know this is not how it would work at all ever. Um, just for the haha -ha factor, if I get Whizbang the Wonderful into my hand, 
I would love to be able to once, and if my deck gets into fatigue, play Whizbang the Wonderful, have him replace my deck, and then we just basically start the game over again. <laughs> That's actually not how it works. Um, I know. That's why I said it was a ha ha to me. Whizbang would have. That's why Whizbang has stats, is in case you get him from another meta. Yeah, I know. That's why I was just saying it would be a ha ha sort of thing to me right out the gate. But um, the main, the big thing that you have as far as legendary minions go, as far as your standard side goes, there's a few legendaries where you're just like, oh man, this thing, and you just kind of throw it over your shoulder. But you know, there's food where you go, woo, and it works for my deck. But um, in wild, I the the. the the fight between the two, I think more or less as far as Wild goes, you're probably looking at running Shredder over Pinata. But then again, that's just me looking at the clash of the four cost four three mech titans at this point. Is there so, a reason is there a reason why you think one over the other? I think mainly because of Pilot and Shredder's immediate board presence effect. Because it's just like, alright, boom, this comes out and it drops onto the board. And then with Piñata, it just it brings a legendary to your hand, and then there's just that chance of just, alright, well, I got patches, or I got this, like, Nat Pagel, or with, um, Wilfred Whizbang and not the new Whizbang the Wonderful. But it's just, I'm going. Wilfred Frizzlebang uh, isn't. Yeah, it's really not. Here, but here, here's the thing it's the same thing uh, argument I, just, I gave when we talked about token. Um, there's a difference between bad legendaries that you put, or bad legendaries or bad cards that you put into your, that you would not want to put in your decks, and cards that you get for free. In that case, there's not going to be a lot of legendary minions you do not want to get, or that will be bad that you get. There are a few, but there's not a a whole lot. So, in general, that that uh, that consideration weighs in in your favor when we're talking weighs in the favor of the card when we're talking about. Okay, and if anything, my also my bad brain was looking at the Wolfwood Whistlebang when it was supposed to be thinking about Millhouse Manistore. Yeah, that's a huge difference. <laughs> that's a pretty huge difference. <laughs> Go, Brain, for finally figuring out the right thing. To be fair, you'd um, rather have the Millhouse <laughs> pop out of the uh, the Shredder than the, than the Millhouse come out of the Pinata. Yeah, that's why it's just like, wait. This is the one that you're thinking about, but, stupid. But, but then again, you'd rather have the Laurel Alker Cho coming out, coming out of the pinata rather than coming out of the shredder. Yeah, you're not wrong. Actually, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. It comes out of the shredder, there's nothing you can do about it. It comes out of the pinata, you can just hold it in your hand. Yes, but here's the thing. If your opponent is the one who pops it before... um. Before like doing their t the rest of their turn, if it comes out of the shredder, they have to start thinking about how to play around that. Yeah. So it's just like I can make that argument at least. Oh no, Laura Walker Cho definitely has a choose. Yes, it very much does. However, we're getting we're getting off topic where that's concerned. So I'm gonna move over to demonic project. Two cost warlock spell. Each player transforms a random minion in their hand into a demon. Interesting hand manipulation mechanic for Warlock. And if anything, it is an even card. So even Warlock gets more support. You also get the potential of disrupting your opponent's combo for things like Shutterwalk. So I'm making sure I emphasize that one. Um... Malagos. Yeah, this is a card that you do not play as soon as you get it, like, on turn two. You don't do it. You wait and you watch your opponent's hand, 
watch it fill up a bit and then you just go aha now i play it and see if i can't get that combo out of there and get it taken care of to where it's just like welp auto concede on your opponent's end in wild same sort of situation set up because you can also play dirty rat with demonic project you can play no Veratu on standard and in wild to try to keep pulling out those combo pieces and just kind of disrupting your opponent's bollocks i really think this card is going to see high end play in uh warlock either in a control style or a just regular decks that we've seen on ladder with warlock um I fear and rue the day that I give my opponent a Malganus in Wild because it's like, ah, crap, I gave them a good demon, and then in my hand I got a poo demon. So it's just like, oh, no. But, well, I'm kicking this your way. To be fair, there's, always, there's, the same that, there's that same type of risk with Mulch, but the whole point is to basically try to... Give yourself an edge by getting rid of a key card that basically you cannot t not um, uh, deal with otherwise. It's the same reason why Dirty Rat uh, was so important to the meta. Um, it was that basically to pull out that key card that you could not deal with otherwise and basically just disrupt disrupt a potentially uh, uninteractive game plan. All right, get those combo pieces out of the hand. And just like Dirty Rat, you do not play this card eventually. Uh, or immediately you figure out you basically have to time it and work out when the best time to play it is and that's with a lot of cards where sometimes you there are some cards that are out there in other classes where you have to kind of have creative uses against certain decks like with uh druid sometimes you have to be very creative with your naturalizes to just try to hopefully burn that shutter walk or burn that key combo card and that's what demonic project is essentially there for yes you're running the risk that you could give them a really good demon but at the same time they're not going to be able to use that good demon in much the same way as you can as a warlock. Sure and wild, you might be accidentally give them a Malganus, just like uh, Mulch can accidentally give your opponent a Rag, but Ragnaros. But that's the chance that you're taking to get a potentially disruptive and a potentially scary uh, minion out of the game. Basically, if it can do, do its job, you run that risk. But that's the risk you can take, you have to take, and, you know, you probably have ways to get rid of that Malganus they put on the field. They're not going to be able to capitalize it in much in the same way that you can as a Warlock. And here's the same, and here's the argument for people going, well, they'll just keep multiple minions in their hand. Well, they did the same thing, players did the same thing for uh, Dirty Wrath. That's not a reason not to play this card. Yes, people will be trying to play around this card, but the whole the whole point is that it gives you an opportunity to try to play around and stop your opponent's unstoppable combos. It's a way to stop that Shutterwalk. In much the same way as if you're trying to just mill or burn or get rid of discard cards. It, it might be your only way to interact with the deck to stop it from doing something unstoppable. And in that way, it's going to see play. This is meta-defining. And it, it's not something to sneeze at, it's not, not something to dismiss. Yes, there are potential blowback situations, but if you, can get, if you can time it and get rid of a key card in your opponent's deck, it's worth it. If you get rid of a Valen, if you get rid of a, a Shutterwalk, if you get rid of a Grumble, if, you, if you're playing against Quest Rogue and you get rid of uh, what, they've been, what they've been regurgitating and repeating and just throw them off, then it's worth it. Mally Goose! Yeah. Any any deck that needs a certain card for a combo, this can, can disrupt this can disrupt that deck and give you the edge you need. The only this may be your only chance of winning. And that's why it's going to be see, see play, and that's why it's so important. We need to have cards like this in the game. I'm actually kind of really excited for it. <laughs> Up next, we have Unexpected Results, which is a four-cost mage spell that, set, that uh, with the effect, summon two random two-cost minions. It is improved by spell damage. Um, and what that means is the spell damage plus whatever effects you have lying around increases uh, the 
cost of the minions I could summon. There'll be two whatever cost minions. So let's say you have, on the board, you have plus three spell damage. That's two five cost minions getting summoned. You have one Maligos on the field. That's two seven cost minions be, uh, be, being uh, being put on the on the board, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you are running a very spell damage heavy deck or a spell damage deck, you can get some insane minions on the board. Um, and if even if you just have a few spell damage cards, this is this is insane. I love this. I am definitely going to be running this uh, because I do have a spell damage mage that I do play in standard, and it's it's crazy because my whole idea is just to have minions that. All they do is buff up spell damage so that I can either, if I need to go aggressive, I can do a whole bunch of damage to the, my opponent, or I can use this to basically help control the board. And being able to not only use use spell damage to control the board, but then to produce more minions on the board to just have that tempo play, this is amazing. I love this card. I am excited to play with this card. This is one of, one of the cards I'm looking forward to playing in the set. I mean, if anything, it's one of those things where it's like, in the comment section when they were discussing, or at least they showed off this card, it was hilarious to see people go, you know, Call to Arms was already busted enough as it is for Paladin. Now we need to put it in Mage 2? And it's just like, I mean... Well, here's, morning... here's the thing. Mage in general doesn't... T most Mage decks don't tend to play a lot of spell damage. It rewards those who, who do and can keep the spell damage minions alive. And I think that's fine. Oh, yeah. If anything, I love the idea of this in a wild format slash arena area. Because it's just like, there's so many things that you can play with unexpected results. I mean, you've got your Cult Sorcerer, you have Darnassus Aspirant... Um, if anything, there is another mage spell damage thing that has cropped up recently. Oh, there's a few. For it's, standard. It's fun. And yeah, there's a few things that have definitely cropped up. And it's just like, you're looking at this and you're going, okay, so I can summon two uh, X cost minions because of the spell damage that is on my board. Cool! Just play it for four or get it for two because of um primordial glyph and it's like all right so now i've basically taken the board not only swung the tempo in my direction but also the fact of i've got spell damage minions on my side of the board what you gonna do um this would be terrifying I would say in Rogue, to be perfectly honest, because there is an even Rogue list that runs spell damage stuff that's running around out in the ladder meta, and it is absolutely bonkers. The, only, the biggest reason I know about it is because Brian Kibler posted a video where he was climbing on ladder and he faced off against it, and I'm like... Oh god, this is disgusting to just see in action. And it was just oh. Um I don't know if even uh if even mage becomes a thing. But it's like okay. Eh. Well, it'd be I, it'd I, be hard for even mage to become a thing to get the spell damage. A lot of the good spell damage minions that mage would want to use are would be kind of odd. Yeah, I do like this card. I think it's pretty good, and it is at least playable. And so it's just like, there's going to be some testing with it, and I'm hoping Mage can kind of get out from where it's at now and just kind of claw its way back to the, towards the top of the table, so to speak. Next up, we've got the man of the hour when it comes to this set. Dr. Boom! Mad genius! Hey, I'm a 7 cost 7 armor, and with my battle cry, the rest of the game, your mechs have rush! I have 5 different hero powers! I got my micro squad that gives you 3 one, one microbots. I can deal 3 damage, I can discover a mech, gain 7 armor for you, and deal 1 damage to all enemies! 
you know, after I I did um, Wiz Bane the Wonderful, I I we kind of deserved that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get down to Doctor Boom Magic. Officially, first of all, this thing is really, really good. I have to say, the first thing that you can say is, is that for one, it will not appear in Arena. His hero power is well, randomized. None of the heroes have appeared in the Arena. Yeah, after they got I, rid of the Death Knights, no hero has appeared in Arena. Yeah, it's the only Death Knight card in the set. They also, if anything, have changed the rules as far as armor goes on um, hero cards slash death knights. Well, because to, to be fair, I think that was that wasn't a set in stone rule. That's just been a guideline they've been following. Yeah. So if anything, we can now see Doctor Boom as seven seven, keeping up with the seven seven theme with it. Um. You can never get the same hero power in a row, so it'll just keep rotating different hero powers. And it's just like, all right, it's an odd cost. So if you're looking to run that Baku control warrior esque style deck, Dr. Boom Mad Genius is getting stuffed and put in there. Honestly, this card is very much in the very good slash meta-defining area. You are going to more than likely play this card in both Standard and Wild for being able to discover your mechs, being able to have your mechs have Rush, and everything else. I personally love this card already i think for me if i don't get it from one of the, the, the three legendaries that i pull early or get in packs i am crafting this guy day one because it is that good so if anything bulb i'm throwing this in your direction the more I've looked at this card, the more amazed I'm, I am at how good this card is. This card is amazing. Um, I mean, yeah, I, before we saw this, I was crafting other, I, other ideas for how this uh, hero, uh, hero card would work uh, based off of the old Dr. Boom. I was expecting something with Boombots, but um, probably a good idea he doesn't summon Boombots or anything like that. Um, the mechs having Rush... Is that can actually be really, really um, important, really, really good. And I think that's um, that's actually a really cool effect uh, that we're gonna have. Um, let's just to go over how good this is. Um, Eddie, Eddie touched on the the armor or whatever, but go over how good this is because I know when we had the reveal, we, uh, we talked, we were talking with um, um, a buddy of Stukes. ours. You were talking, yeah, we were talking with Stukes, and he wasn't as impressed. But again, I've grown more impressed as we've gone over, and I think. All of these hero powers are good. Uh, some are better than others, true. But the more I think about it, all of these are really, really good. Let's talk about probably what the best hero power of the bunch, which is Delivery Drone, which allows you to discover a mech. Um, any mech you want, uh, which can allow you to do some magnetic turns um, to, to make some bigger mechs. Just put a mech on the field to just kind of help uh, uh, increase, the, increase the pull of whatever you're trying to do. Plus, that mech, when you play it, is going to have rush, so you can you can take advantage of it immediately. Um, that's very very strong. Um, there are a lot of really good mechs out there, a lot of really good effects out there. Next up, we have Zap Cannon, just three damage, which whatever you want, select three damage. It's it's essentially even better than the buffed up um, Mage Hero Power because it basically does one more damage than that. And just imagine Eddie if you could somehow get a hold of uh, those fallen heroes in Wild. No, nah, I mean, hey, I mean, with the three damage, the only thing that you're not getting from it is basically the drain from. Uh... Yeah, it's it's essentially the the War Warlock Death Knight Hero Power without the uh, life steal. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredibly powerful. Um, as we've seen Warlock from Warlock, this is going to help you control the board. This is going to help you just push damage to the face. You have the ability to do whatever. Three damage is huge. Um, seven armor. 
boom. It's gonna take a while for people for things to get through that. Just buffs you up. Just, just uh, you get that ar If you lost that seven armor you got from becoming the hero, you get it back. There you go. Um, and then we get to the two that are probably the weakest, but they're still very good. Like micro squad, squad looks like oh, it's three one one boom bo micro bots. It's not impressive, especially if you're going against a mage. But then you then you have to remember that all your mechs have rush now, which means these micro bots are not sticking around. You are sending them into minions. You just summoned hounds. You've just unleashed three hounds, is what you've done. They just don't have charge. They're essentially the hounds from the Houndmaster. You have three of them. They're just robots. Robo hounds. Let's call them. Summon three robo hounds. Throw them at minions. Yeah. If you played Mo Monster Hunt, you know how good of an effect that can be. Add in the fact that, again, you can, you will have, you'll have things to buff up these microbots if you want, or you just send them in and weaken up, uh, weaken up the minions. So essentially, these microbots become zap cannon. Only you can kind of disperse the uh, damage however you want among your enemies. That's fine. And then kaboom, Eddie. Like I rewatched some of the stuff from um, the presentation, uh, as well as really paid attention to this. First, before I get to how much better this ability, this ability hero power is than when I first thought, because Eddie, this hero power is even better than I originally thought. Really? Here's the thing. Deal one damage to all to all enemies. It doesn't affect your minions at all. Your minions do not get damaged. And here's the thing. Well, it's just one damage to all of the enemy min enemy minions. Like all the enemy minions, just one damage. Yeah, but here's the thing: Warrior has a ton of stuff that does that. They have a lot of whirlwind effects, and whirlwind effects in general for Warrior have always been seen as good. It's always been seen as good to have the whirlwind effects, and this one just doesn't damage your enemies, your your minions. It damages your opponents, so that whir that whirlwind only happens on your opponent's side of the board. And basically, making sure that all of your enemies, all the all the all of your enemy minions, all the enemy minions are damaged is huge. Because now you can execute if you need to. You can um, there you can there's like you can use that to help buff up and piggyback off of uh, uh sh off of like well, I think it's like shield bash. If you need to now with the armor, this allows you to just weaken the enemies enough the enemy is enough to just increase the chip damage. But here's the thing, Eddie. Did you notice like, specifically what it said? Mm -hmm. Deal one damage to all enemies. Mm -hmm. Enemy this hero as well. This includes the hero as well. You're getting in one more da chip damage in at the at the, the enemy hero's life total. This could win you games. This is huge. Oh. And like okay. I said, Warrior has a lot of things and it's a lot of spells and its spells and abilities in its toolkit to take advantage of to take advantage of damaged enemy minions. So, yeah, this may probably this may arguably be the weakest of the five, but this st is still a pretty good effect. Um, if you had if, even if it was you had Kaboom every every um turn, you would not. Would not turn down an effect that did one damage to everything on your opponent's side of the field, including your opponent. It's a decent hero power. It's the weakest of the five, but it's it's still incredibly strong, and I think it's going to help you win games. This is an incredibly strong hero power, an incredibly strong hero. This is arguably stronger than when I looked at Hagatha when we looked at Hagatha last year, and I wasn't impressed. And Hagatha has kind of proven proven herself to actually be a pretty strong hero, and I think this hero is even stronger. From a from a certain point of view, I think this is a very strong hero. I think it's going to see a lot of play. I'm actually kind of excited to play around with it, and I'm excited to see what people do with this. All right, so next up we have Omega Medic. Omega Medic is a three cost three four priest minion with the battle cry: If you have ten mana crystals, restore ten health to your hero. It's for three for three cost for three costs. It's kind of average in stats, and I'm going to be completely honest, Eddie. For an Omega effect, I don't think it's that great. Um, this reminds me of the um, the, the 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 priest Cthune minion, mm -hmm. which really didn't see much play. 
And I think this is this is much the same. It is essentially you can restore ten health to your hero, but it's it's uh, dependent on this condition. And the Cthulhu minion didn't see that much play when it had a similar condition that you probably could have could have met uh, in, met in that priest Cthulhu deck. I don't think this is going to see much play at all. I don't think this is going to be. I don't think this is going to see play in priest. I don't think people are going to, really going to care about the Valkyrie. I don't think the Valkyrie is really going to come in, come in handy. Or not going to not going to care that much. And you just it's just weak to play on tempo. It's just going to be weak to play later in the game. Priest is not going to care about this. I they, they have better options, and I just don't think this is going to... the main thing I could say in defense of Omega Medic is that. If you're if you're looking to play like a tempo slash board oriented priest deck, Omega Medic has a good stat line for three cost. In an aggro matchup, you're not getting to ten mana crystals. Like you're realistically screwed in a control game this omega effect could be really good really useful but uh, outside of that like i said the only way to look at omega medic and just go all right this is how it can see play and this is how it can be played is in a tempo board oriented type of priest deck which it could crop up like there has been some surprises of things that have cropped up that have just come out of left field and you're going wait what how does this deck play and then you sit and watch and you're just like oh well, that's nifty. So, well, if anything, do you potentially see a tempo slash board esque priest deck that could potentially come up out of the bubbling crude, so to speak? Um, there are a few out there, but the thing is, I don't even think they play this because um, there's no reason for those decks are going to have to consider that this minion as a vanilla three cost three four and. The thing is, you really don't play a lot of vanilla minions anymore. That do, they're just based off of stats. The stats have to be really good in order for you to. Do that. Uh, you're basically going to be looking at what their effect is, and if the effect is not going to have, if the effect is not going to come into play in your deck at all, which it will not in most priest decks, and it's not going to matter in most priest decks, then why play a vanilla three cost three four when you can put in something that's going to help your tempo game and just make you a lot stronger? So I don't think even tempo decks are going to play this. All right, so if anything, next we shall move on to Astromancer. Seven cost, five, five mage epic with a battle cry. Summon a random minion with cost equal to your hand size. So we basically have Spiteful Summoner with the mage hand size. Okay. I mean, like, I'm going, is hand mage gonna be a potential thing? Like, I can see where this would be useful for Reno, because Reno likes to hold back a good bit of the cards, and things like that, but I'm just looking at Astromancer going into, like, both uh, wild and in standard, and I just go, you're gonna want a big hand for them. So, like, a hand slash zoom age slash tempo kind of, or not tempo, but at least, like, a control mage type thing going on. I'm just sitting here going, I don't know. Because it's just... Like, th th this is the oddball card that kind of throws me off my mage curve. And, like, I can see because of Prince Arugal 
from the last set and things like Book of Spectres and things like that to be able to where you can fill your hand with a lot of stuff. And then you just go, all right, Astromancer on turn seven. And then just you get a plop down like eight or nine cost randomly. So I, I'm going to de facto here because Bulb is my de facto. Find me something that would potentially change my mind in a sense of making this card like high end and make me really excited for it. So Bulb, excite me. Arena? Arena works. Um, I mean, maybe this... I think the what the the type of mage uh, deck that's going to have the larger hand size are going to be more of control mages. Then I don't think control mages will want to play this because they want to hold back and they want to play control. And Astromancer is more proactive. And putting Astromancers in your deck means that you are getting rid of play, uh, deck slots that you could have used uh, or card slots that you have, you could have used to help, to help control the board a little bit more. Um, in general, though, I was thinking that this isn't too bad in just any regular mage either, because normally unless you are playing tempo, your hand size is not getting, like, really, really low, so you're at least getting out a decent minion. But even then, I don't think most... I think even when you consider that fact that Astromancer is not going to be not going to be bad most of the time, it's not going to give you summon a bad minion most of the time, the big question is, uh, is why? Why would you put this in a deck? Uh, this is just one of those cards I just don't think really has a has a home it's a neat card i think that's that's, I, that's why i think it's gonna shine in arena it probably will shine in reno decks in wild but i don't think even though there's probably a lot of mage decks that could that could make use of her i just don't think that they that they, they'll basically look and go why put an astromancer when we can put in this other card that is a lot better and helps towards our game plan and astromancer doesn't do that in any way whatsoever so I don't think Astromancer is going to see a lot of play. It's an interesting card. It's it's kind of like doing what Epics used to do of saying, this is a cool card idea, but it's not necessary. And I think that's why Astromancer is. I don't think there's going to be a lot of people with Astromancer. I don't Astromancer. I think it is playable, but I don't think I don't think it's going to see a lot of play. Next up we have Celestial Emissary, which is a two cost two one mage elemental with the battle cry. Your next spell this tu this turn has spell damage plus two. Well, that's yes. Here's the thing. Like I said before, I do run a spell damage mage, and when I'm looking at a card with a spell damage effect, I say, "Well, that's cool, I guess." That means I wouldn't put this in my spell damage deck. The thing is, I think if you're running a a mage deck that is really interested in spell damage, you want to actually have that spell damage kind of be consistent on board. And this one just gives you spell damage uh, plus two just for this turn for the next spell you play, which means you have to play this in conjunction with another spell. So you, is it going to be a lower end spell? Is it going to be a higher end spell? That makes this more of a late game card, which means this kind of has to sit in your hand for a lot, which means you can't really use it when you need to. And in late game, it's a two cost two one, which means that pretty much anything can kill it. And if you're going up against another, another mage, it's a huge liability to you. Is that spell damage plus two worth it? I don't think so. I think you would rather just choose very solid minions that have regular spell damage and build up a little bit here and there, and if that's the direction you want to go. And, and in elemental decks, I don't think the spell damage is that impressive. And if you are looking for spell damage, there's another minion that we will be talking about that is probably a better choice. I don't think Celestial Emissary sees play. The only way I can see Celestial Emissary seeing play is just for a potential turn 8 finisher. Or at least that mid to late game finisher effect. That's about it. Otherwise, if anything, Bob's kind of hit all the points and kind of hit the nail on the head on this one. So it's just like... Yeah, all of my nothing. We ain't about that life. Uh, next up is cloning device. Two cost priest spell. Discover a copy of a minion in your opponent's deck. 
cloning device. I like it. If anything, it makes it to where I can just go peekaboo into my opponent's deck and go, hmm, I want this card, or this card, or this card, or this card. And in wild, I get to just start playing Big Priest. Oh, man, can you, can you imagine the disgustingness of the Big Priest mirror with cloning device? <laughs> I mean, y'all thought Resurrect effects were disgusting with this. Take a look at cloning device and just go... Argh. I think this is play in both standard and wild. Because it's just, like I said, I get to go peekaboo into my opponent's deck and just grab something from it and put it on my side of the board. So, Bob, can you change my mind and maybe go, no, Eddie, this doesn't do what you want it to do. Oh, no, I'm, I'm putting this into uh, Lyra Benedictus. This is going to my... I, I fell in love with this card. I'm going, ooh, I can use this. Let's see what the, all the crazy things I can do. I'm all up for stealing my opponent's crap and then using it against them. So, yeah, this is going to see play. Next up, we have Giggling Inventor. Eagling Inventor is a 5 cost 2 1 with the Battle Cry. Summon 2 Annoyotrons with. Uh, yeah, it's summon 2 Annoyotrons. Let's just be honest. I, 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 I even bet it, it, will, it will actually summon Annoyotrons. Which would be great. Um, I think my, my only hang up with this is I feel like uh, the 5 cost that Giggling Inventor by itself is incredibly weak. Um. And so I'm going back and forth of, is the bow cry worth it? I mean, maybe if it had a little bit more health, I'd be going, okay, that's fine. But I guess that's my only hang-up, is I, I feel that Giggling Inventor by itself is too, weeks, too weak. I like the idea of it bringing a Noyotron back, and that might, may be the only reason sees play is because you can summon two Noyotrons, and Noyotrons are great, especially if you're running a mech deck and you want to magnetically attack, a, a magnet, magnetically buff the Noyotrons. But in general, I think that Giggly Inventor by itself is too weak. Will it see play? Um, I don't know. I'm hoping so, but I'm I'm just gonna say the jury's out on this one. I'm not sure. Tokens, tokens, token. Hello, hello, hello. I do, if anything. For me, I like it because it's just like. Uh, I can definitely see this being played because of Druid, and it's just like, here, let me just ramp you up a little bit more. Also, Paladin, here you go, have a thing to be able to just, you know, mechanize slash magnetic into. So, I do think it does see play, mainly because of just being able to vomit out those two, uh, mechs that potentially cannot be cleared in the same turn. So, just really... Uh, I'll put it in my playable position. Next up, we have Xerix Cloning Gallery. Nine costs. Legendary spell for priest. Summon a 1-1 one -one copy of each minion in your deck. Uh, I so if anything like this could be your capitalizer slash finisher or for the death rattle Priest deck slash quest. You you get what I mean when I say that. Um, big priest. I honestly and realistically do not see big priest playing them because they're very much already heavy spell oriented, 
and you would have to cram more minions in to make it beneficial slash useful. Now, if you did cram more minions into the deck, to where Zerg's Cloning Gallery was something that you played, you could then use the Priest's Spellstone to revive whatever gets killed from this one, one copy of each minion. And that's just on potential alone. So if anything, I, I'm... Bulb? I'm having a hard time with this one. Can you give me, just give me something to where I can kind of latch onto it and just be like, all right, you convinced me to play it. Maybe in a combo deck to make sure you get one of copies of stuff to help with the combo. Um, basically, if you ha have the spells, you can basically get ready to go go off the combo. But then again, this costs nine mana. That's going to be, that might be harder to do. Although then again, if you have enough um, of, um, or Radiant Elementals, um, maybe not. So this might be good in a combo deck. Um, when I saw the 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 video example of it, um, mainly summoning Death Rattles, I'm going, oh, that's not a bad use for it. Uh, is in the clo is in the quest deck. Other than that, I don't think there's going to be a lot of uses for this card. I'm not sure how much uh, play it's actually going to see. And um, I mean, maybe if you want to use it as a tool to basically see. Uh, in what order uh, your minions are going to be in, so you know uh, when you're, uh, which you're which you're going to draw next. But um, it's still an expensive expensive uh, spell. I'm I'm really not sure. I think that I think it may see the most play in like a combo deck or a death row deck. But I think that one's up in the air. It just depends on whether priest thinks that they, they those deck priest thinks they can use those, this card in those decks. So this one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how good this is or not. We're going to have to see how people make use of it, if they make use of it at all, because I have no idea. And I think we're just going to we're just gonna call it on this one, which is uh, Blight Nozzle Crawler. It's a 4-cost 2-4 rogue mech with the Death Rattle. Summon a 1-1 one, one ooze with Poisonous and Rush. I kind of like this one. Um, I like the Death Rattle. Um, being able... I'll go... Here's, here's the thing for it. The death rattle is good if you can, if you can, if you're the one to set off the death rattle. If your opponent sets off the death rattle, it's not so good. I guess that's that's gonna be the big qualifier. If your opponent kills the crawler, and then take care of the ooze. Then there's no point in having a rush. So you need to figure out a way to to protect the mech and make sure the mech can kill it or get the mech rush, so that then the one one ooze with poisonous rush comes out. I guess we need to see if people can do that. I like the. F I like the fact that hat that the one one ooze does come out. I think it would be better as a battle cry. Like if this was a battle cry, it gets played no no matter what. But I think now that I'm looking at this being a death rattle, could actually hurt the cards card chances. Yeah, because silence's effects are pretty powerful as well. To just go and I'm not gonna let that happen. Plus, if anything, in a rogue mirror match, or at least, um, the outcome where it's just like, and I'm going to sap that back to your hand. So, that doesn't work at all. Um, I, I could see this potentially going into wild, mainly, because it's just... Oh look, I can make it disappear with conceal and then use the poisonous rush effect. But overall, this this just I put it in my I'm gonna have to put it in my bad slash dust pile because it's just eh and with the end of this part for my review, I'm letting you know, Bulb, right now, ahead of time, I'm starting next time. All right, okay. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, I guess. Um, uh, we will see you next, guys next time.